Hmm. We haven't had any disturbances as of late. Isn't that a good thing? No docks means a long break. It seems a bit weird that we haven't gotten any though. We just couldn't have a break, could we? Where are we? The Prime Dimension. Ah, Streets of Rage. One of the best 90s beat em up games of his generation. This and Final Fight built this genre up. And to hear Street the Rage coming back, I was a little excited. Here's the thing, Street the Rage 3 was like 26 years ago, and most of me playing Street the Rage was from the old Sega plug-in plays. You know, the controller that you plug into the TV and then it like have four games. Street the Rage was on one of those. And the collection of Sega games, which thanks Sega, because Comic Zone and Kid Chameleon are awesome, and I'm so glad I got to experience them. But my history with Street of Rage has always been, it was always a game that I played, but I was never super into. But now to do the Kickstarter and long, long waits and delays, it's time for us to talk about the Mac Daddy of all beat em up games, Streets of Rage 4. Okay, I'm gonna be buck 50 with you. I usually have a history with games I review, but I got bare minimum to none on Streets of Rage. So let me, let me be honest. This takes place 10 years after Streets of Rage 3, the main crime boss, Mr. X, finally behind bars or died. They didn't really explain that to any of the new players, but I'm assuming died. You see, he has kids, Mr. Y and Mrs. Y. And to be honest, they're trying to take over the world using sound waves through vibration of their music. Kinda weird, but hey, go with it. They even have control over the police station and all the police members as well as military members. I don't know how the hell they did it, but A, just let the game do its thing. Luckily our heroes, Axel, Blaze, and three new characters, Floyd, a jacks are but he's super duper cool, Cherry, a young guitarist, and Adam, who is essentially Cherry's father, a police commissioner. Oh, and he's also, if you took Blade and Urkel and fused them into one, that's how his design looks. They join together to defeat Mr. Y and Mrs. Y. Yeah, I'm sorry if I messed up my script, it's really bad here. But yeah, look, beat em up don't have very cool stories, at least not story heavy ones, but the basics are action hero plots. Honestly, I want a comic just for the art, but I'll get to that. So let's go to the next portion, which is where the game actually does shine, it's game playing. Okay, so the gameplay of a game is of course the meat and potatoes of a beat em up game. In this game, yeah, they did it. Great, and modern it up. Pretty much. The story mode is what you start off in and gets you through, gets you into combat. You pick a character and well fight. You have your standard medium attack, then you have your heavy special moves attack, but they drain health every time you use them. Kind of a counterproductive, you know, way of doing it so you don't spam them because they do usually take out enemies in one hit. Each character has their own special moves and finishers and are awesome to look at. So, characters will start. Axel is your standard brawler in mid tier. To me, he controls fire and is when you need a heavy hitter, but a character that can't move very fast. Lay is my favorite character. She is more agile and handles a lot faster, but she is very prone to take damage and doesn't dish out a lot of damage either. Floyd, my man Floyd. I love this character. I love him. He's a powerhouse. Grabbing opponents, throwing them around is just a powerful character. Most of his hits take off a whole opponent's health bar in just one hit. But he is a glass cannon. He'll take damage and he's very slow to use. Like, I'm surprised that he's the slowest character out of the bunch. Now, Cherry isn't one of my favorite characters, but design wise, I love her so much. She uses a guitar and makes good for staggering opponents, but that's where she kind of goes. She does very little damage and takes time to use. She's one of those characters where when you use them, you have to actually know what you're doing because she doesn't do very much damage, she doesn't have very much combos, very much a different type of character. And lastly is Adam, and to be honest, he plays a lot like Axel, and that's all I can really say for him. There's nothing that really makes him stand out as much as everybody else, but he just seems like an added character that I felt like, you know, should not have been an unlockable one, he could have been there from the start. To be honest, this is a solid beat em up, and grabbing weapons and beating up on enemies felt great. And the boss fight, oh my god, I love the boss fights in this game. They are crazy and fun, and they actually do progress the story. You can fight former characters in the game that were either on your side or, you know, were bosses back in the day, which is something great. 
So the gameplay is definitely an A plus for me, and I genuinely do love what they did with this game. The art and OST of this game is just fucking fantastic. Now again, Street the Rage looks beautiful. Art that wise, they killed it. I wish this was an animated series or a comic. Please, Sega, give us that. The art style is much more in line with the Udon comic style from like Street Fighters. I'll probably show you those. You know, you'll probably see them on the screen. Style of art. Also, the music. You have a choice between the classic, beautiful soundtrack that came in Street of Rage 1, 2, and 3. These are some of the classic Sega Genesis music to listen to. And they're one of the greatest, in my opinion. I suggest you guys listen to them because they're really great, and whoever put them together had a lot of heart and soul to it. I know I usually look up to people, but again, this review I didn't actually expect to make, so yeah, some information I don't get. But the newer remixes I actually loved, and I'm sorry, here Discord. <laughs> listen to Man, do each, each of these slap. None of the music is bad. Like, my god, I love this soundtrack. The game. A plus, so let's round up the good and the bad and let's get this review finished. So let's get into my favorite portion of these reviews, the good. Why is this game so fun with friends? Like, they, the, the game is already a good game, but it's even more so when you have some friends. I fucking love how fun it is though. The art style is just awesome and they look great. The OST is near perfect and the combat is fluent and flows well. Each character is unique and fun to play with. Though some you end up liking more than others. Like my favorite is Blade, you know I gravitate more towards female characters and that can jump around and which is why she, why I love her and she's my favorite. Also, there's an extra menu that shows the art gallery, means that shows the art and sprites, even sprites from older games, which is so cool. I generally love the game and everything good about it. But again, not every game is perfect, it does have its flaws, so let's get in the bad. I don't have a lot to say on the bad of this game. The most not positive thing is the story and even that doesn't suck. Just basic. I will say I wish certain bosses became playable like we could have a lot more playable characters that could be played in the arcade mode or in the battle mode. Like how are you gonna have a 2v2 mode with like only 5 characters when the boss characters have tons of potential to be used? Like, I think that's the most gripe I have. Like, I would love to play as Shiva because he looks cool and he fights awesomely. Or the wrestler guy who I can't remember his name at all. I'd love to play as the electrical chick that you fight in the beginning of the game. Because she'd be dope. Or the dominator chick you fight. Or even, like, hell, Mr. Y and Mrs. Y could have been playable characters in the battle mode. I just feel like it kind of feels like a waste of time at the same time, but I didn't play it. So I'm not super duper mad. This this could have been a lot more. And I feel like they should have added a lot more playable characters. But that's about it when it comes to the bad. Like, it's difficult, but that's a good thing in my opinion. When you have a difficult game and it's not unfair, that's great. So I guess all I really gotta say on the bad, uh more playable characters. We want more. We want more. Don't do not make them DLC. Okay, this game wasn't on my radar, and I'm not gonna act like it was. I'm not gonna pretend like I was like, oh shit, Streets of Rage 4. But it was a $24 game that I needed in a hectic time right about now, that we all kinda need in a hectic time. And it was well above my expectation. Honestly, think you guys should give it a try. Give it a chance and play with your friends. It's literally four players locally and online four players. Of course, practicing your social distancing, thing, of course. But give it a try. It gives it gets the phantom stamp of approval. Don't forget to share this review. I worked really hard on it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. So I'll see you guys on the flip side. Comment on what you guys think of this. And I'll see you guys next time. Keep wrong with your bro and peace out. Prime Dimension? Yeah, one of the Crypto Gems said that Prime Earth was essentially a city where all things meet. So, like a giant mall? Yep, basically they were home, just a different version where all sorts of things exist. Well, this is a drain thought of our adventure. Yep. But look, rifts are appearing everywhere, so let's go figure them out and fix them. 
Hopefully this leads us to where Docs is. 